sort of like you watch sports events and before the game starts, there's always a pre-show. Uh, well, ours is not a sporting event, but sometimes it is an event because we are not always as prepared as we might like to be. Veronica smiling. So we decided we'd just shoot the breeze for a few minutes, sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes it's 10 minutes. Um, so um, Gina will be joining us shortly uh, and we'll have our regular show going. Uh, just it's breeding season and I think if you saw the um, information on the site or on Facebook, we're going to be talking about nesting boxes and nesting pads and things like that today throughout the show. As always, the show is you uh, by asking questions uh, and sending them us during the show. Uh, we're able to help a lot of other people who many times have the same question as you do. We also now save the emails I get on a regular basis um, and I will respond to the email and then I copy it and give it to Gina. So we'll be using some of those on the show also. Um, if you've never watched the show before, uh, welcome aboard. Uh, I know we're going to be talking about breeding, but I thought I'd mention a couple of things because this is an exciting time of the year for most of us. Uh, it's breeding season. You plan for this for a long period of time. Um, maybe you've separated your hens and cocks, and now it's time to choose which pairs. Either they're going to be the same pairs, if that's the same thing. If that's the case, they're the same pair as last year, you put them in your um, breeding section where the nest boxes are. If you will have special pairs, you should have some sort of a separate cage or box. You put the hen and cock in there. Uh, and because they've been separated, it's so easy to mate them. The hen and cock will mate within a very, very short period of time. Uh, I'm starting to get young now. It's been a late, late starting season for me. So um, I was having a good time yesterday because now I've got three or four uh, boxes with uh, young one in them. Um, they've banded, and when they get to be banded, of course, right around that age, uh, their, their poop starts to get a little bit um, more in volume. So uh, what I wanted to mention to you is uh, clean those nest boxes as often as you have time. You're not disturbing the birds. You can pick up those young. You can pick up the eggs at any time. So what I do is I pick the nest bowl up with the eggs in, or with the young in them uh, and scrape it out. I use that triangle scraper, scrape them out. I try to do it every other day or so. That keeps that nest bowl clean and it won't be as wet or as messy. Um, so I do try to clean those out. I also, a lot of people don't necessarily do that. Uh, my, I'm using straw as bedding material at this point. And what I do is when I'm, straw gets a little messy, maybe after a week or two, I throw it out and I put new straw in. The, the birds don't care. I pick the baby up, put a little bit of straw in the nest bowl, pat it down, put the young right back into the nest bowl, which gives you, uh, gives them a nice clean uh, surface. And with the new straw, uh, the old straw sometimes gets matted down. And if you don't notice, the bottom of the bowl could be exposed to the bird's feet, the baby's feet. And depending on the kind of bowl you've got, if they try to stand, uh, their legs could slip out from under them. Uh, and that creates something we call splayed leg. The leg, in a matter of a day or two, if you don't notice it, that bird will be have a leg way out to the side uh, the rest of their life where you'll have to uh, euthanize it. So uh, change the bedding, put a nice thick, uh, layer in, don't, not so much that the young one could fall out, but that's always a good idea. And something I do, uh, and I do it for a very good reason, maybe it'll make sense to you, and you've heard me talk about this before. Uh, I have every one of my lo lofts, <laughs> we'll be talking about that later. Every one of my lofts um, has a, uh, a felt tip pen, what do you call, oh, Sharpie, they call them Sharpies now. And what I do is every time an egg is laid, I mark the day the egg would lay, lay. You don't have to write the month because there's only 125th in a month or 126 or whatever it happens to be. And I mark them. Uh, what you might want to do, and this I changed a little bit this year, the incubation uh, for fertility, 
doesn't begin until the second egg is laid. One egg is laid, next day there's nothing. Next day, the second leg is, uh, egg is laid and the parents are now uh, sitting tight. Eggs are gonna get warm and fertility uh, take, takes place. So what I do is let's say an egg is laid today is the 26th, don't mark it. Then the next day is blank. The next day is the 20, 26, 28th. So you might on the first egg mark 28 because you know fertilization doesn't start and I put it with the other egg I hope I'm, hope I'm making myself clear. So now I've got two eggs and they both say 28. Uh, and I raise a lot of different, should not varieties. I, I raise a lot of ro uh, homers and rollers. And what I do with the rollers is if I roll or lays and it's marked 28, I throw the 28 egg, two eggs away. I put one racing homer, number 28, under the rollers. The rollers are fully capable of raising one racing homo, although it's a lot bigger than them. That way, uh, especially with whites or the really top quality, race quality birds, I'm raising a few more. I don't want to raise young rollers, so I may as well uh, put them to work, and that's what I do. I uh, will uh, have them the same, throw the roller eggs away. The, racing homers then lay a, another egg. I try not to do this two or three or four times in a row. I try to do it and I have to keep the records. I don't want that hen or the male uh, to be exhausted from the breeding process. So you can get away with it once, maybe skip once or two, twice, and then do it again. Uh, so that gives me the, the ability to raise more youngsters. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. That's pretty much what I wanted to mention to you. But during this time, I thought I'd mention a couple of things that we don't normally talk about, uh, maybe single items, like we're gonna talk about a trap. I wanna talk about this. It's a very unique drinker. A lot of people have maybe uh, a small section or cages that hold more than two or three or four births. You fill this with water, this comes off, fill it with water, you put it back on, this is all made to hang right on the side of the cage. So what happens is as the birds drink, water is going to come down. It's such a unique idea. We normally have these in three sizes. We have a container coming. These are made in Poland. So we do expect to have those within uh, where end of April 1st to May, the different sizes. But it's a great unit. And if you have a lot of birds, you can even put it on at floor level and you have eight or 10 birds, they can drink out of this. So it's a, it's a great unit. It's in our catalog. If you have any questions, fine. Uh, I have where I keep the birds that are gonna be up for auction, uh, like the ones that were this week. What I do is I use the smaller one because my cages are three level, uh, like that, one pair, one pair, one pair. And I put a smaller one there so the, the water in the straw does not get wet great idea because if you have a regular opener, open container, excuse me, an open water, uh, sometimes they splash it and the squaw gets wet. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about is I've used this one for years. It's a trap, kind of unique. Well, I shouldn't say we all know, but when you have mice, the mice very rarely walk across the floor. They're always on the edges trying to stay out of sight. Just Mice nature. Is that a good word? Mice nature? Or is that most nature? Most. Most nature. So I've used these traps. What they, what you do is the trap is going to enter here. So I slide this up against the wall. So the wall is here. When the mouse is coming this way, it, it will go through here and through here rather than coming around. I put a little bit of cheese or you can put any kind of food in here, although they tell you you don't need any bait, but I put a little bit of bait. When the bird, when the mouse comes through here, there's a, a I want to show you, you can crank it like that. When a mouse walks through, there's a little platform, if I can hit it, there, it went off. And what it does is when it, when you, when a mouse sets it, it's a very uh, touchy little trigger in here, if I can hit it again. I haven't wound it up enough, but what it does, when it hits that little platform, 
is a, uh, it rolls and pushes the mouse right in this container. Now this, of course, is on it. So it holds the mice there. And the, what happens is the one mouse attracts the other mouse because once it's flipped into here, it's alive. It's, it, once it calms down, the other mice hear it and they're kind of curious, they come in. I have, one time I had a real mouse problem and what I did was put one of these traps out and it was so full of mice. There's little holes here, ventilator holes. You could see the fur coming out. It was so full. So what, if you want to empty it, you pull this, dump them out and put, put this back in again, put them in a plastic bag, put them in a trash can or a dumpster. Can't see from this side. All right, and then this goes here. It's called a catch-all mousetrap. Been on the market for years and years. A great unit. And what's really nice about it, made in the USA, not made overseas. So we try to buy American whenever we possibly can. I wanted also to talk about, we're talking about breeders and putting birds in a uh, separate unit, or maybe a single cage where, uh, in fact, the birds that were, we auctioned off this week, one of the pair is on eggs. Uh, and what I want to do is put something like this in here, put your feed in here. You can put feed, vitamins, feed, grit, and this goes in here and the birds can eat right out of here in the single unit. This happens to be, i to be sure, yeah, this is the water. So you can put water in here and water in here, doesn't really matter. This one is for feed. Now this, I wanted to mention, this comes in a one hole, a two hole, and a three hole. This one is for feed. The little vent hole helps on the back and the front, helps to keep the feed dry as the breeze is blowing through. Uh, and it hooks on the outside of the cage, just like this. The birds see this and they stick their heads in here and uh, get their feed. You fill it without disturbing the birds. You don't have to go into the cage itself. You fill it this way from the outside, grit, maybe a food supplement, maybe um, the feed on this side, whatever, or you can put feed on both sides. So it's a handy little unit. I've used them on a regular basis. Um, and I wanted to show you, they do come, this is the one, one hole. So you can get a one hole, two holes, whatever happens to what your needs are. Um, I, I remind you, if you do have a question, I got a couple of more minutes. I do hope uh, that you'll Facebook us. Uh, is that the right term, Facebook us? Well, I'm getting better. You can Facebook us and uh, during the show, please, and we'll answer that question. In the past, we've got a lot of um, uh, questions that are really good. Um, and I am in the process of writing a book, and the book will be on health and tips. And a lot of the tips that we've gathered over the last couple of years, many of them will be going into the new book. So if you have a question, or even if you want to offer us a tip, I do get those occasionally. People will send me emails and tell me what they've done. Uh, and it, and uh, it, it's really interesting. And I, I actually have, I have to admit I've stole some of their tips. We get a lot of questions for now, and rightfully so. Uh, our new catalog is still not out. Um, it, I would think Veronica next week for sure we should be done. Now you don't want to say yes because I keep changing things, right? But the new catalog is just about done. Is the printer open? Are they working? Okay, we weren't so sure whether the printer would be open, but uh, we, here he is. We're waiting for a quote for the catalog. Hi, Gina. Uh, we're waiting a, for a quote and then we'll ship it. But I'm hopefully we'll have those, those catalogs. Go ahead, walk right across. I don't mind. We'll have those catalogs in a week or two. Another minute, Pony. Uh, no, pardon? Nothing. Oh, hi. If you don't know, this is Gina, the star of the show. You know, you know how comedians or big bands, if you ever go to a concert, they have a warm up, and it's usually somebody less famous than the star, a band or whatever it is. So you notice I'm sort of the warm up. I have to be on first. Uh, By Gina, choice. Pardon? By choice. By choice, but. Um, Gina had to go and fix her hair and put some makeup on and stuff like that. Um, 
I don't know why she does it. I can't tell the difference. You look good all the time. So <laughs> anyway, just three o'clock, you turn it over to you. <laughs> Welcome to Boys on Facebook. Um, hope everyone's doing well through this whole mess that's going on. And I hope everyone stays well. We're not going to talk about that mess, are we? No. no. Okay. I'm just wishing everyone well. Hope everyone's doing okay. good. Um, oh, wait a minute. So, did you talk about breathing during your first 15 minutes? Oh, uh, just a couple of things. I things. thought I heard you. Okay. Anyways, you uh, weren't supposed to, but um, <laughs> I'm getting dressed for the show. I forgot. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So, um, we do have a new website. Some of you may know, some of you may not. Um, if you have the old one, you need to um, change it to foyspetsupplies.com. It's no longer Foy's Pigeon Supplies. You won't be able to get to that site. So foyspetsupplies.com. If you have any questions on how to navigate through it, just give us a call. Um, it's pretty easy, but um, I know a lot of people don't like change. Change is hard for some people, but it's, it is easier to navigate once you get to know it, like most things. Okay. Okay, partner. Um, partner. Where's your uh, suspenders today? I don't see no suspenders. Real cowboys don't wear suspenders. You ever see a suspender on a <laughs> handsome guy on TV or in the movies? I reckon I didn't. Well, I reckon I'm not going to wear my suspenders. So if Manny sees them. Well, I got uh, mine on today. Like, oh, you have yours on too. I That's got funny. my suspenders on. <laughs> But, oh, what, what, can, I, can I tell a story about this? See, the hat's too big. I had to put that in there. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I think I told part of the story. We were on a cruise, and we yeah. were off on an island, and uh, I bought 10 hats that were on sale. And then I came home, and I, I bought three or four more hats. People have given me hats. So I decided most of the shows, I can't say every show, most of the shows, I'm going to wear some some get up. So today is Western uh, costume. I wasn't informed, clearly. Well, and it's Western. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, next week, I Lord knows what it is. But I'll try to slip in a, a few uh, Western comments. So, okay, partner, go ahead. You're on. That's not how you say it, but that'll work. How do you say it? <laughs> P-A-R-D-N-E-R. Partner. Okay. Partner. Partner. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, where what? Oh, um, so we have two containers come in this week, so we do have a lot of stock back in. We was at a lot of things like. Um, I was going to tell them the day the day we had on Monday when the, Monday. Oh, Tuesday when the containers came in. So we were scheduled to have a container on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. Um, so the container showed up Monday afternoon, and he wanted us to unload then. Well. Clear, clearly, I didn't have the people to unload then, so we had to do it Tuesday morning, which is the scheduled time. And he slept in the truck, right? He stayed overnight because he came from Philly, and um, so we unloaded it Tuesday. Um, we only have two hours to unload a 40-foot container, so it took us about an hour, 40 minutes. Got it done. We was just getting done in the warehouse, probably about 3 o'clock, putting everything away. Here comes the other container. <laughs> Shows up. Um, so we decided to unload it Tuesday uh, to get it done, knocked out. Whew. That one took us a while. Well, you're not done yet. Wh what? Well, what about Cassandra? You don't want to talk about that? Mm -mm. Can I? Go ahead. Uh, we're unloading, and all of our products come in containers, I mean on pallets, and what they do in overseas is they put one pallet and they put another pallet on top of that. So we've got two pallets high, very, very heavy. And uh, we do not have a platform where you can drive the forklift right into the container. So what we have to do is put a pallet jack and pull it. Well, in the process of pulling it, the whole thing fell over. No, and, we were turning it. Well, you want to tell the story? Well, if you're going to tell it, tell it right. We were turning the to turn it around to push up to fork it off. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can continue. So 
what happened was it fell over and Cassandra was right behind it where it fell and basically scraped and landed, banged her foot, right? Yeah. No, we'll see. It mm -hmm. fell on her legs. Okay, it fell on her leg and um, uh, she ended up with a badly sprained ankle and her legs were scraped all the way down, right? It sort of slid down there, her legs. It, um, and you're tempted to interrupt me again, aren't you? It was you? about 3,000 pounds. Go yeah, ahead. It was 3,000 pounds. Um, we uh, were going to call an ambulance, but we ended up taking her right to the hospital, which is only 20 minutes away. Uh, when we got there, because of the virus, um, nobody is allowed in the hospital except the person who needs the service. So nobody could even go in. They came out, got her, took her into the hospital. She's doing better. Um, nothing was broken, bad sprain and, and scrape, but uh, there's still some some things we're not sure of, nor is she. So uh, she's going to see the doctor today. Did I interrupt you? So the update is she went to the doctor today. Um, she has to have an MRI next week. He's concerned about blood clots and her ACL and minor tears and stuff. Um, her leg is swollen pretty bad. Um, so that happens, right? So after- Are you cutting me off? Yeah, after they, <laughs> after they took her to the hospital, Kim came back, but we had to finish that. It was only one, pa one pallet and one fallen pallet. Right. Anyway, we got that off. And while we're doing that, here comes the mailman to pick up. Here comes UPS to pick up. Here comes FedEx to pick up. And here comes FedEx Express. I know the uh, driver, his name's Mark, and here he comes. So we got four trucks to pick up and the rest of the, the container to empty. It was quite, quite today i the next morning i slept until nine o'clock i was exhausted, I was exhausted. yeah that's okay. a lot of work um, so as i was saying um before you were rudely interrupted i wasn't gonna say it, but yeah um a lot of stuff that was out of stock is now back in stock um from natural we have the clay nest bowls we have the belgian nest pads all four sizes of feeder with guard and the vitamin mineral bucket, which we've been out for a long time. So those, are, oh, and natural bath salts. And all, all in one, oh, we, didn't, we didn't want that. You know better than me. So. And then also Versalaga, we got that in. So all Versalaga feed is back in stock. Um, the all-in-one mineral mix is back in stock along with some other stuff. So if you was waiting on something, um, it's pretty much all back in stock. All that stuff that I said. You wanted to say something? Nope. Okay. Um, so give me a minute. Oh, this is heavy. We didn't have a light bulb, right? So no. that's why I took it a little bit. I don't have a light. I forgot the light bulb. So I'll let you talk about this. No, I'll Can let you, see you talk about it. Mm -hmm. Please. Okay. So um, I even got my scarf to show. Keith Wilkerson, his wife made us girls these scarves, and he sent Jerry this very nice Steeler lamp because you know he's a Steeler fan. Mm -hmm. I'm not Jerry, Keith. Well, I'm going to be wearing a Steeler costume is. one of these days, too. So anyways, Keith, mm, Keith's wife sent this to Jerry. She makes them. She makes them. It's a lamp. Very nice. Um, thank you, Keith. It is. Very thank you very nice. much. So, so nice of you. That was... Uh, unexpected and we really do appreciate it Truly. do more than you should we appreciate you and we appreciate your business yes thank you that's heavy isn't it, it is heavy <laughs> what is it full of marbles uh, um, wouldn't it have been nice if so we're still much. with dimes or quarters <laughs> or 50s <laughs> or 20s <laughs> don't send me dimes and quarters <laughs> let's talk about um, pigeons and stuff like that well, first, well, yeah, but let me announce the um, auction winners okay. first. So the Saddleback Homers, forgive me if I say your name wrong, Saddleback Homers went to Miguel Crescencio, and the Tiplers went to Jeff Caster. So if you haven't called yet, give us a call after the show. Um, ask for me. My name's Gina, and we'll get you all squared away. Jerry? What, what number should they call? Oh, hmm. 
You can call 724-843-6889. Um, I will say this, uh, I've got some really good birds coming on Saturday from a gentleman in Baltimore. So um, starting either next week or the week, next show, or show after that, we'll get in some really, really quality birds. Okay. Um, we're going to take a couple questions. Yep. Hi, Scott. He asks, how many days should I wait till I candle eggs? At what points will I see bloodlines? You know, it would be interesting if Scott Bennett lived on my road, then Scott Bennett would live on Bennett's Run Road. And we named an app. Anyways, hi, Scott. <laughs> in answer to the question, I, I, in a way, I touched on it at the pregame show. Pregame. The first egg, when it's laid, let's say it's laid today, it's not fertile, you can't candle it, there's nothing there. Then there's a, a day, and then a day with the egg, no egg. Now the next day is the second egg laid. And that's when the parents, the, men, the male and the female, start to set the eggs and create uh, the fertilization of the egg. I shouldn't say create fertilization. Incubation period is the word. Uh, and about three, no more than three or four days after that, you will be able to look at it with a flashlight or and uh, or uh, you hold the ball the egg up against the light bulb don't touch it. don't touch the heated bulb so and you'll be able to see little squiggly lines which is uh, the blood lines coming through the egg uh, i've been doing this for so many years now i don't even bother with that i can tell within four or five days just by the color of the shade of the egg when an egg is first laid, it's kind of a pinkish cast. Uh, by the time it starts to become fertilized, the egg darkens more of a gray color. But uh, that's that's what I do. Scott, thanks for your question. If any more, please uh, um, send it to us. These are the kind of questions we need. Other people might have the same uh, question, and I'll probably keep that kind of question and, and uh, use it in the future. All right, we're going to talk to Larry. Larry asks, how do I protect from hawks? Boy, there's a question we get a lot, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have birds and you fly them, the cocks, are going, no, not the cocks, the hawks are going to go after them and you're going to lose them. I wish I could tell you what to do. There is nothing. There's a steep, steep fine if you get caught killing a hawk. So, um, what you may want to do, if it's an ongoing problem, uh, contact your game commissioner. It might be called something in your state. I contacted mine. He came over and said to me, and I'm not saying they'll all say this, Jerry, um, this is your hobby. They're killing part of your hobby. Uh, if if you catch one, I don't want to know about it. Business, but if some right. if right if somebody. Uh, um, reports you, then I'll have to come and visit you. But until then, do what you have to do. I, I can't say anything more than that because there's nothing really. You can't trap them. You can't shoot them. Um, I've ever got rid of a hawk was I've had it happen twice. They came through the door, the trap door uh, into my loft. Uh, and they did some damage. By the time I got into the loft, um, the hawk came in, but I assure you, he never left. <laughs> okay, next question. Hi, Maria. Um, Jerry, my birds have been sick for four days. His symptoms are a lot of diarrhea, and she also had a lot of food in her crop. Doesn't look like she's digesting it. I've been given amoxicillin. What do you suggest? Yippee ki yay. That's a, that's a heck of a question. Western. Yippee ki yay. Is it? No, I don't mean to uh, uh, laugh at Maria. I'm just trying to be myself. Maria, Jerry, my burner, I mean, we did sick for four days, symptoms, lot, lot of diarrhea. What color? is the diarrhea also diarrhea. has a lot of food in her crop what you may want to do pardon 
E. coli? E. coli? No. No? I don't think so. Um, okay. But when you hang the bird, what you do is hold the bird upside down. First of all, you're going to, I'm ahead of myself, try some warm water and a little bit of baking soda. Um, it's not going to hurt them if it's a teaspoon or a gallon, but if it's a quart, you need less than that. What you want to do is get a, like a basting syringe, or if you've got the, we sell those little red uh, squeeze bottles, and okay. put some warm water and uh, the baking soda together down the bird's throat, hold this beak and gently massage its chest. And then when you turn the bird upside down, all of that's going to come out. That may just solve the problem by itself. Uh, but it could be E. coli too. Didn't you just mention that? I did. <laughs> it could be E. coli. Uh, amoxicillin is not the best of products. I would use something that uh, amoxicillin does treat um, um, help me out, E. coli. But you're better off with a product that treats paratyphoid and E. coli by itself. But if you don't have anything else, start them on the amoxicillin immediately you can give that good thing about amoxicillin if they're breathing or whatever uh, you can use it during their uh, breeding season um okay i need to know what color the droppings are discoloration on a beak for repertoire rep that's a different question oh okay well, i'm sorry reading the bottom yeah that's so a different i'm sorry about um i can't give you the answer but Give me a, an idea of what color the droppings are. Okay, next question. <laughs> oh man, you know, I make a mistake. I'm not perfect it's, like I'm you. I'm just telling you that's a different, um, okay. far from perfect. By the way, the pre-show was outstanding. I watched you. Did you? I did. That's how I knew you were talking about breeding. Don't you worry about losing a drop just because I, you know, <laughs> my program by myself is almost uh, perfect. I would be so sad. But I'm not as cool looking as <laughs> Anyways, okay. Have a pair I took out a few days ago, separated it. Now the female is breathing a little hard, sometimes opens her mouth. Does not have any discoloration on the beak for respiratory. All right, I'm sorry. If I get a thought, I have to write it down now because oh, the thought goes this way. Oh, buy it. Did you, anybody, did you notice I have my hearing aids in today? I did. Well, I can hear so much better now. Oh. Have a, nice. <laughs> don't mind me, I'm reading it again because I forgot what she said. What am I looking for? Um, I, I, would you read the question again? Just cause. I have a pair I took out a few days ago, separated it. Now the female is breathing a little hard, sometimes opens her mouth. No discoloration around the beak. What I think the problem may be uh, is that um, if you are just putting those pair, the pair together, uh, and that pair hasn't been mated before, or even if it has been mated before, um, there's a lot of stress because they haven't been together for a while and the breeding process. So um, that female can be very, very stressed out. And when they're stressed out, you'll see sometimes the difficulty in breeding. I would think that's probably going to go away within a week or so or maybe less. The only other thing that might do that is certainly respiratory, but it doesn't sound like it. Or it could be just to heat. Uh, on a very hot day, we're, we're certainly not hot here, but I'm not sure where you're from, but if you're in a very, very hot climate, sometimes the uh, excess heat will do it. But give it a few more days. I, I really don't think there's any serious issues there. But thanks for your question. Okay. Have you ever ridden uh, a coyote? What, what is that? Western term, cowboy. It's a horse. Oh. Yes, I have ridden a horse, but not a in New Zealand and in, Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico and New Zealand. Uh -huh. In Puerto Rico on the beach in New Zealand. Up Were you with me? No. I rode, Vicky and I rode a horse uh, at the ocean. In Bahamas, wasn't yeah, it? Bahamas, yeah, somewhere like that. So it's not the same thing as a horse, or it is? Pardon? Is it a horse? 
A Kios. Yes. It is a horse. Western for a horse. Okay, so then I have ridden one. I've got more coming. I'm sure you do. Okay, well, let's talk about, well, we're kind of supposed to be talking about breeding stuff, aren't we? Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> oh, what did she have to put up with? Oh, Maria has deep green droppings. You can handle that one, Gina. Oh, you got a book there. Uh -huh. Well, I was looking at E. coli to see. Okay. Deep green would be, in most cases, a bacterial infection. And I think she mentioned she had amoxicillin. Is that yes. right? Yeah. One teaspoon to a gallon uh, for seven days. You can go 10 days. You can go actually 21 days. Uh, and if you had something like uh, chlamydia, you can go 45 days. So it's a very safe drug. I would suggest you treat all of your birds if that's possible, even if you get eggs and young with amoxicillin, one teaspoon to a gallon. I think that'll take care of it. If it gets worse or if there's a problem, or if any of you folks want to talk to me, um, give me a call at home, 724-359-5355. Am I right? Yes. Got a question? No. No. I'm talking to her. Oh, okay. So you want to talk about, we're going to talk about nest bowls, right? Okay, so the topic of today's show is breeding, um, breeding season, nest bowls, nest pads, Nest fronts, eggs, nest boxes, <laughs> eggs. Okay, yeah. So, do you have your catalog? Where'd my catalog go? Oh, oh okay. thank you. Awesome. Um, so we'll talk about nest boxes first. We don't want to answer the question. We better. We'll come to that question in a couple of minutes. Moment, okay. Yeah. Okay. Nest boxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or do you want to talk about this first? No, we're going to talk about whatever picture is up there. Oh, I got a terrible picture to put. You can see how professional we are. So what do you want me to do? Nest with boxes. Nest do, boxes. Do. Okay. Are they going to be on the screen? We won't see them. They will see them. Oh, okay. So which is the first one we're talking about? This one? Right here. 3105. Okay. 3105. And I'm told you're looking at on, uh, on the screen. It's a very basic nest box can also be used for chickens uh, but we make it um, uh, the size is in their catalog or our web website if you want to see it but what I li like about it it's not one I use one of the big things is um, it comes in three sizes it has a board across the front which is about almost four inches high so you're lot of room as i said for the young ones to get out um and being one two and three you can stack one on top of another it's not a as i say it's not a very expensive box but for instance a three section one two three you can screw it right to the wall that's what it's made for or what you can do is make a platform and put it on if you want but give an idea a three section nest box boys nest box is $45, so that comes out to $15. You a... can't give that. That's the old prices. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't mention the price, did I? Yes, you did. Well, it's still the three nest, three unit is much cheaper uh, than buying three, one, but one unit. So, good one. Okay. Did I stumble around on that You're one a little okay. bit? So <sighs> that's the Foy's nesting box that comes in single, double, and triple. Okay, and if you need more information or pricing, call Gina Dawn. You can call anyone at the shop. Okay, but it, or you can look so on the website. The problem is, too many people call you, right? Yeah, you never get your work done. It's okay. When you're though, famous. Okay. That's one of the um, problems you're always going to have people stopping you and. Uh, wanting your autograph they want a picture taken with yeah, you uh -huh. don't they have to show now don't oh, they yeah yes they do anyways so, okay. next would be the all-american nest box number 1012 okay the all-american nest box is one of the first ones that we came out with 
I don't think anybody else sells it as a complete unit, but I've been in the business. See, I was in the pigeon business back in the uh, middle to late 60s. And this nest box, I designed a picture you're showing, looking at. I designed, and the design has not changed one iota. So if you're looking for a great nest box, um, simple. Uh, you, the nest front is with, comes with it. It comes right off. There's two little buttons that hold it in. And you'll notice that inside are the two little sticks that hold it from pushing all the way in. They don't go all the way to the floor because if you're using a triangle scraper, you're scraping the droppings towards you into a bucket or a box or something. So that little area that doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the box is for you to slide your uh, scraper underneath it so you can get everything. Um, also, the door locks, you push the door where they go in, uh, that locks uh, being held in place. So if you want to put two birds in there, you can, and for, for a mating, and that's certainly that's what we're talking about. Pardon? I didn't well, say that. Well, I'm smile, and I, you know, thought maybe I said something wrong. Am, am I supposed you to smile? You ought to know the hell she gives me after the show. You know, she says, you got to stop picking them. Did we not get a call from somebody that's, or an no, email? No, we had a customer that We had a customer in. here, and they said. They watch you pick on me. All the time. Ori, and he's probably watching right now. Well, I wonder where Manny is. I haven't heard from Manny. I know, though. huh? Okay. Um, but anyways, uh, in talking about the nest box, I use them uh, in two or three of my sections. And what I did was I built a, a little frame. comes this way and comes across. Around, it might venture into that nest box on the floor and the parents that are in there that's not her nest it's nest box would beat the heck out of it getting out of there so I build a frame about this high uh, and then I start to stack my nest boxes on that all as high as I possibly can and I say hi my ceilings are only seven foot so it's about four box four or five boxes high uh, so that it also helps me um, with my arthritis, um, my back pain, uh, and all those other things, I just, it's, I'm getting old. I can't get down on my hands and knees and clean that last box anymore, so I don't have to. Or if I head it that way, open where the birds could go in, they're going to have eggs and young in there, and I'm going to have to crawl down. And don't you feel bad for me? I, I do. Think. Thank you. Um, 12 by 24 is standard, although we have a larger one. If you have any questions, as always, you can give me a call, 724-359-5355, um, or call and ask for anybody but Gina, because she's so busy, 724-843-6889. See, I listened to you. You're on one end or the other. <laughs> call one end of the spectrum. I don't think that's a, a cowboy. If you're just tuning in, um, this is my get up. Oh, uh, did you notice how well coordinated? I did. You this did is a cowboy well. shirt, little tan here, matches here, matches my hat. Uh, I'm just a dressed up dude. Dude, there's another one. Dude is a Western word. Okay. Yeah. You were studying for that, huh? Yeah, I finally found it. <laughs> Next one. Okay, so. Oh, are we going to take questions? I uh, don't run the show. I just ask questions. We'll do Never a question. Interrupt. We'll stop and um, ask a question. Hi, Jeff. Jeff said, how is it possible to treat with three-in-one or other combo drugs using one teaspoon per gallon when all of the drugs used individually recommend one teaspoon per gallon? Good question. Um, my answer would be the amount of uh, product, the, okay. the three together, um, it's a good question. One third, one third, one third. So it isn't as strong as, and you've heard me say this many, many, many times. Jeff, if you want to treat for canker, use a canker product. If you want to treat for um, coccidiosis or worms, use a product specific for the product itself. Mm -hmm. The three-in-one in the form that you're buying it when it's a combination is not me meant to be a treatment. You 
you've heard me say this on occasion, maybe Jeff, you haven't heard me say it, but uh, it's a preventative, use it twice a year. But if you have a history of canker or worms or coccidiosis, or you've had the droppings tested, uh, and you know you have worms, in almost all cases, you'll never have all three at the same time. You'll have one or the other. So I tell people, if you want to use three in one, and I like it better than four in one, use it twice a year. Once, uh, uh, maybe a couple of weeks or so before breeding, and then once when you're all done breeding, no more egg, no more young in the nest, use it again as a preventative. But if your birds are sick uh, and you know what you have, Use a specific drug. Yep. Boy, Jeff, you put me on a hot plate there. I had to think. <laughs> Did I get a, it? Was a good answer. That's right. Yeah. Make sense. Yeah. Oh, good. That's right. Um, any new white young birds? Is that Scott Bennett from Bennett Farm Road? It is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott, I have young ones, but. I'm not caught up. I have a number of orders for them. Uh, I, if you ordered today young white ones, you would not get them until the latter part of April or into May. Uh, what I've been telling people since the beginning of the year, if you're absolutely sure you want them, you need to send me a deposit, tell me how many you want, and I ship in the sequence that I get the orders. So uh, if you ordered today or you sent a check in or whatever call first uh, i would tell you the same thing you probably you won't get them until may so i have whites but they're already all sold hi keith i don't know if you're just tuning in or if you've been with us but we did talk about you at the beginning of the show you and your wife and if you weren't here we just wanted to say thank you again thank your wife for us also for everything we truly appreciate it um I saw that, Bronk. I got up over here. <laughs> um, we'll take another question, and then we'll get back to the uh, nest bulls. If I'm reading it, there's two questions from the same fellow. Okay, we'll go with the first one. Okay. I have a young bird that was upside down in the loft two days ago. I put it on half a divot tablet, and it's been staying alive so far. The droppings are green. How long is it safe to keep giving the divot? Well, first of all, remove it from the loft, put it in a separate cage. Um, uh, I think you'll probably, I'm assuming it's still on its back. I don't know that mm -hmm. um, because that's an odd position. Uh, usually is something like PMB or paratyphoid. So my question, um, okay, you, as far as how long to use divot, uh, you make sure it's segregated. I, I don't know what kind of a bird it is. If it's a roller or a tippler, I would give it a half in the morning and a half in the evening. If it happened to be a bigger bird, like a racing pigeon, I would give it, because of the severity of the, the uh, symptom, I would give it one full tablet in the morning, one full tablet in the evening for a minimum of seven days. Don't quit at five days, go seven days, but I got a feeling you're gonna lose that bird. Okay. okay. We're going to talk some more about breeding. Okay, we're box. going to talk about actually the ultimate nest box number okay. 2084. This is, there's a picture on the screen. Is that correct, oh, yeah. Veronica? Yeah. Sections. And um, you'll notice as you turn it, there are vent holes in the back, on the side, on the back, and on this side too. Lots and lots of ventilation. These are made to be stacked. I know you probably can't see my head. Is that right? Right. That's okay. So these are made to be stacked one on top of the other. And they lock into place. It even has, if you re if you have three or four high, you have rollers down here, which means you can roll the whole stack up. Also, I'm trying to move with it, okay? Stay there, still. how's that? Stay still. Okay. Sure do it. okay, perfect. So, the other nice thing about these is if you want to open them to clean them, they open up. 
If you want, if you want to open it from the other side, you can do that. If you, these little buttons go down in here. These go here to lock it in place. And then if you want to clean it, there's a drawer on the very bottom that comes out for cleaning, really convenient. Now, like I say, I have a whole wall of these. And when people come into my loft, they're impressed, but um, they're expensive. I, I have an advantage here. I'm, I'm trying to do it upside down. Okay, that goes in there. Then the doors drop down for the bird to enter. Inside, you can't see it, but inside there are sliding units, three pieces. One, you can slide them and the birds cannot see each other. Two, there, there are grills. You can slide them. The birds can't get at each other, but they can see each other for mating. And the third one is you can, uh, it'll come to me. Oh, you can have the back side closed and the front side open. So it's all, all different kinds of combinations. It does come with a small drinker to water them. We also have units that, what's the matter? What are you laughing at? Go ahead. I'm going to put you in the hoose cow. You know what the hoose cow is? No. It's jail. <laughs> Whoops. The hat doesn't fit me. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm kidding. I know this is one of the sliding units that go here. So it, it comes unassembled and for you to put together by yourself. Oh, stop laughing at me. I'm doing my very best. I'm not sure what I did that was so funny, but anyway, this is called the ultimate nest box. It's a heck of a unit. They lock in together. They roll if you want them. <sighs> was this a bad idea? No. Okay. If you have any questions, you give me a call. But keep in mind, to save money, they're shipped unassembled. The directions are with it. Pretty simple to put together. What I'm going to do is this way, because I couldn't see backwards, and I can't look way in. Oh. Go ahead, Gina. Oh. Can you fix the camera? So that was the ultimate nest box. <laughs> it was an epic presentation, wasn't it, folks? Oh, Jesus. That was interesting. Um... Am I cut off? Am I good? Okay. So where's your catalog? I do at? look like a cowboy. You do. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Next, are we talking Next. about a picture? We're, we're, yeah, no. Okay. Uh, let's go to a question real okay. quick. <laughs> Hi, Bryson. We're discombobulated um, today, aren't we? I am. You're not. Bryson asks, how much feed should I give pigeons that are sitting on an egg? On eggs. Uh, um, right, Bryson, I have a, I guess I have a question. Do, are all of your birds um, in mating cages or are they in a section and they can go, come and go uh, as they please within that section? Because it has, there's a different answer. If you're feeding them in individual cages and you're breeding, um, I, I would suggest you feed them twice a day. Uh, and we talked about that before. How many ounces does a bird eat in a day? And I forget. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking four ounces, but I'm not sure. It's not important. What you do is if you've got them in individual cages, you're going to experiment. You're going to give them some feed. Uh, and if by the next day there's still feed in that little container, then you're feeding too much. Just keep cutting it back until they eat what they want. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you're um, if you are feeding them on on the floor, the grant the uh, feeders on the floor, and they have to come down, that's completely different because you are feeding all the other birds too. Uh, and uh, it, that's the way I do right now. I'm breeding, uh, and they all have to come down to the floor to eat. And once again, I, I I'm careful. If I go back, then I feed once a day. If I go back the next morning and there's still feed in there, I know I've got to cut cut back a little bit. Okay. I, I think I answered it. 
but I'm really not 100% sure. Okay. Why do you keep about? moving my nest wall? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Whoop, did it break? Whoop. Did, did you have some caffeine or something before the show? Something fishy about that question. <laughs> <laughs> I am fish. <laughs> I know. Um, I don't even know what I'm doing. So uh, we wanted to talk about this. What hand did Wild Bill Hickok have when he was shot from behind in the head? He was what? playing cards. Um, A full uh, house. Nope. And the guy walked in, unbeknownst to him, and put a gun to his head and shot him in the back of the head. At that time, what hand did he have? Let's we'll see if somebody can answer it. Okay. It's a famous, a famous, famous hand when you play cards. It's automatic. When I used to play a lot of cards, they would say, oh, you got this. Hmm. Hmm. I bet Google would know. <laughs> We'll find out. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I just wanted to, s I don't know. Veronica, <laughs> I don't even know. 3423. My goal is to get her off stride. That's another fourth term. <laughs> You're off stride. You that one? 3423? The double hanging breeder cage? Okay. okay. The double hanger hanging metal breeding cage. It, when you look at it, it has two little prongs that uh, hang from each end on the top. That's to screw it right to the wall. Now you can also stack them, but if you want something at a certain level, screw it to the wall, and it'll stay there. Two sections, one, uh, uh, which each section is big enough to put one pair in there for breeding. So if you look at it, um, it, they, you can use this type of a drinker if you want to. It hangs on the outside, so you don't have to disturb them. Uh, so it's a metal, it's a big unit, uh, and uh, caution you, it's expensive to ship because it's not knocked down. And when you get it, it's ready to go. You hang it on the wall, or you can put it on a shelf, don't have to hang it. To on the wall. There's a tray that you pull out, one for each of them. No, I'm sorry, it's one oh, big yeah. tray because yeah. I use them. Uh, and you pull it out, clean that, and slide it right back in again. Got a wire floor. The wire floor allows those droppings to drop right through. So if you're interested in something like that, um, I use, and we throw that in, don't we? That green drinker. What, uh, the, I don't think so for the, the other one we did. No. It's a short picture, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Okay. So anyway, we have a little green drinker that you can put in there. I like them. So I put it in the corner. I water them from inside, and the way it works, they don't spill it, and I feed them from the outside. Great unit. Um, we have brought those to the shows before, so you may have seen them at the shows. Mm -hmm. um, and if the show season coming up, you want to purchase any, we can bring it to the show that way, way you won't have to pay shipping. Yeah, it's a good point. When we take them to the show, uh, mm -hmm. we never bring them back. Every Everyone we bring is sold. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're a very popular unit. The problem with, uh, the biggest problem, like I said, is shipping. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive. But if you have a, a one or not, how much you're going to ship this? I'll give anybody a call, but Gino, you know, don't ask for Gino. You know, <laughs> ask for anybody, especially, I think you should probably ask for Kim. <laughs> that was, oh, you know she's, she's not, watching. I hope she's not, oh, she watching. She <laughs> well, anyway. Or you could always come here, visit us, and pick it up. Oh. That's a thought. <laughs> well, in some cases. Well, I guess they could come pick it up. We'd have to take it out for them because we locked yeah. the door. Well, right? yeah, our doors are locked right now, as probably with everyone. But, but we're here. If we you need still, something, we're here. Yeah. And we can still get, get you an order if you want to come pick it up. You just can't okay. really visit. Another, you cut me uh, off. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, I don't want you to be talking too um, much. Then they'll realize oh. they don't really need me. Four aces? Is it four aces, the nope. hand? Nope. Two pair? Nope. No, two pair. Royal flush? Nope. Aces and eights? Nope. Aces and eights. Who was that? Jim Combs. 
Who was it? Jim Combs. Jim, aces and eight. Two aces and two eights. That's a dead man's hand, it's called. Uh -huh. Learn something new. Yes, sir. That's from the Wild Wild West. Roger that. Okay. At what town did, oh, what was that famous lawman? Never mind. I know what town is. I can't. I'll have more information later. Okay, so next we're going to be talking about Ness Bowles. So the first one we're going to talk about is number 390, which is the sanitary Ness Bowl. Okay, so that's that one been on the market or similar products like it. It's made of paper, um, recycled paper, and it's got a uh, sort of a rough surface to it. Mm -hmm. um, one good thing about certainly with that rough surface, the babies can get a grip and you'll never have a uh, splayed leg problem. It's a throwaway unit. Uh, some people do try to use it for uh, maybe two, two uh, cycles. Um, I don't think you should. Uh, you should use it for one when the baby's there. Uh, when the baby's out of it, throw it away, put a brand new one in. Um, inexpensive, easy to use, uh, and they're recyclable. So that's that. Made out of recyclable made of recycled material yes paper and if you have the catalog they're not in the old catalog um that's the old style dandy nest bowls which we no longer carry no. the ones that we sell now the old ones had a little hump uh in the bottom of them and, hold uh, and they had a tendency to roll the eggs away from right. the center um these as gina so artfully stated and described well, that, i don't think that's a question but anyways um <laughs> flat surface, uh, have two little holes. You'll see them in the picture, I think. They're the same thing, aren't they? Holes? Well, like that one, I can't no, remember. No, no holes. Okay. No holes. Just in my head. <laughs> All right. You can see them on the website and on the screen right now. Veronica has them up. <laughs> okay. What's next? Whew, number 413, the Belgium nest bowls, okay. I believe. Yep. Yes. Belgium nest bowl. This is the Bells and Nest Bowl. I use these sometimes, and I, I say I use them. I use almost everything we sell one time or another, so I can answer questions. And uh, if it were, I use them, and the racing homers are able to raise young in them. They've, they're, they've got a gritty surface here, so birds can uh, get a grip. But uh, I don't like them for racing pigeons, and that's a, a big market. I think they're better. Uh, served if you can barely see this outside diameter is the same on a clay bowl, but you can you can see these the clay bowl is much deeper than this. But for rollers or tipplers or small breeds, uh, they're a great unit, very easy to clean, very, very strong. Buy one of these, I've never ever seen one break, so you're buying it for a lifetime. And if you, you'll notice it has four holes, that's for ventilation. But one of the other things you can do, um, if if you have bigger birds, they have a tendency to move them, you can put a screw or a nail down through there and it'll hold it in place. But these are for ventilation. You see there's a raised area around here. So when this is sitting flat, there's still airflow underneath. That's your Belgium nest bowl, heavy duty plastic. Did I miss something? No, these are one of the nest bowls that have been out of stock for a while, so they are back in stock. Okay. Um, question real quick, why at times one baby pigeon grows weaker than the other? Well, when you have young ones and they first born, or maybe through the whole process before, the, one will catch up with the other. But one is always smaller than the other. It's just the way it is. Um, if you're saying growing weaker, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, does that mean they're sick? Uh, I'm not sure. Why don't you uh, uh, get back to me? How old are the babies? And is the weaker one sick and does it die? Or is it just smaller and it seems weaker? <clears throat> Difficult uh, question to answer, but with the information I have. Okay. Did I skip the clay bowls? Yeah, 2120 clay bowls. Okay. These are the clay bowls. This is what I use in all of my lofts. Okay. And this, we didn't bring this up. This is what's called a coconut nest pad. It, as you can see, it fits in there real well. And to be frank, this 
fits into the clay bowl better than the felt one does. Yeah, it, that's a small yeah. coconut. So this is a, a seven and a half inch or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like them because they're deeper, they're heavy, they can't be moved around, uh, they hold heat better, they've got the uh, same kind of vent holes on the bottom. Uh, the bad thing about them, and like I said, I use these in all of my loss, and uh, the only bad thing about them is that they're breakable. You drop them, you, they're gone. It's like when you walk into a shop and uh, the, the, there's little signs. Do not touch. You know, if, you, if you drop it, you bought it, something like that. Um, so anyways, this is what I use. They're heavy. When I'm done, at, uh, done with one or at the end of the breeding season, I have a, a big 55-gallon drum I put about this much water in them and in it and I put a whole bunch of these in there and I let it settle set overnight and then when I take it out of the water uh, I have a hose I hose them off and all the droppings pretty much all of them will come right off because they've been um, in water overnight and I just put them away now um, as I said it's my it's the most popular um, if you're interested in to me, I guess we would call it the ultimate nest bowl. I like them better than anything on the market, in my opinion. These were out of stock for a while, too, so they are back in stock. Um, they are expensive to ship, but that's because they break so easy, and we have to pack them very well. We wrap them with bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. And separate them. Separate them, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you order six, we wrap them, put a, a layer on top of the pack and put yeah. another one, another one, another one. And they take time and well, time is money. But um, we've learned from experience, if you don't pack them right, well, you're, you're, you're going to get them broke and we don't want that to happen. Yeah. Okay, clay yeah. nest bolt. Yep. Then the weave. plastic weave nest oh. bolt. Plastic okay. weave nest yeah. bowl come in two sizes. This is the smaller one, like for, tip, for tiplers, rollers, or even doves. Um, lots and lots of ventilation. You can put a, a <coughs> nest pad in here. In fact, you absolutely have to put a nest pad in here because as a pigeon grows, without a nest pad in here, the leg is going to slip through. Mm -hmm. uh, and if babies grow so fast, sometimes the leg would slip through and uh, it swells and there's not much you can do. So all these are a good unit, come in two sizes, lightweight, but, uh, and these little cutouts are for nothing other than even more insulation. Uh, ventilation. Uh, ventilation, thank you. Come in two sizes, have to use an S pad. Okay. We do have other mess bowls also. They're all in the catalog and on the website. Um, we're just not gonna talk about all of them today. If you compare us, to our competition. There's a fine competition out there. Nobody has the selection we do. We're right off the Pennsylvania Turnpike. So if you're traveling east to west, west to east, uh, if you're coming from Ohio, we're, we're only 10 miles from the line. When you're on a turnpike, you get off at Beaver Falls or get off Chippewa. Get, now, there's a Chippewa exit, it's an Indian name. Uh -huh. Country Western, <laughs> Chippewa is Indian. You get off there and visit us. Uh, we'd love to see you. Everything we've got is on display. And where we, the packing area and showroom is connected to the warehouse. We'll take oh, you into the warehouse, uh, show you anything you want to see. So if you have the opportunity to come on down. I don't know if that's come on Western. down. That's not Western. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, uh, you, with one of the visitors, would love to have you. If you want to come on a weekend, call, and uh, in most cases, uh, we'll, we'll, somebody will meet you on a Saturday, or we'll open up the store for you. We prefer not on a Sunday, in, in, in a case where you just absolutely can't come and want to very bad, and you promise to spend $500. <laughs> <laughs> We'll come down on a Sunday. No, no, just, just kidding. Yeah, hey. ever, ever think about this? During the cowboy days, by the way, I was mind boggled the other day. Um, our company was formed in 1883. I love to read Western books. All of the stories from the Old West are from just 10 years, 15 years before we opened. 
they were, so cars were just barely around back then so they were still shooting each other and you know they used pistols and rifles and oh, things like that hmm. it's something came to my mind but it flew I, I i thought so i saw that <laughs> um <laughs> i thought you were going to say something about my mind no oh i know what i was going to say <laughs> okay <laughs> It must have been stinky time. They didn't have bathtubs. They didn't have showers. What the heck did they do? Keep looking for a crick or something? A crick. Crick. That, yeah, no crick. Anyway, what did they do back then? They I must have show stunk. You. I reckon. Stinky I time. No. Anyways, third time's the charm, right? Yeah. So the pigeon eggs, we have wood and plastic. The plastic was out for a long time. They are back in stock. And they're full, um, aren't they? Yes, they're solid, solid wood, solid plastic. So if you need false eggs, then we have them. We, we also have, do we still have some of the canary and the parakeet and the chicken, chicken and the mm -hmm. parrot the eggs? So yes, if we you do. are into poultry or cage birds, we have the eggs for them too. Mm -hmm. And the other use we talked about eggs mm -hmm. before. The other use for them is if you don't want to raise any young ones, you throw the eggs away and put a one wooden one, and they'll stay with them. Creek, not creek. creek. <laughs> I do say creek. Okay. Creek. <laughs> but a lot of people around here do say creek. Creek. A lot of people do. Yeah, they also and say, say wash. I'm going to red up the house. Yeah, red up. Red up means we'll clean, clean the house. Or mm. wash your clothes. I say wash. wash. Yeah, wash. Wash. Yeah, wash the clothes. Or yens. That's a Pennsylvania thing, yens. Uh, yens. But, but I say y'all. Yen. Yens. You say y'all. I say y'all. We say yens. Yeah. Yens. So, okay. anyways, um, Elvis, why is the ten? You ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. Why? <laughs> why is a ten pound of grit oh, so expensive to ship to Puerto Rico? Well, shipping. Did you know Elvis appeared on a western movie with? Uh, I did know that. Uh, John Wayne. Mm -hmm. I'll shut up now. Um, back to you, Elvis. Sorry. Um. Shipping is based on weight, size, and distance. Um, so it all. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't interrupt. I'm yeah, you are. Quiet. You're disrupting me. So depending, you know, we're in Pennsylvania, so you're in Puerto Rico. It's going to cost a little bit to ship. So anything you order, weight, size, and distance, um, shipping. In, in that case, it definitely is a weight. Yeah, weight and distance. Yeah. No. Um, lost my train of thought. The answer would be to use to buy a five pound bag. Of we don't sell five Grit pounds. concentrate. Oh. A ten pound. Oh, grit concentrate. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, we sell that. something called grit concentrate. Um, it's a product that's been on the market now for over forty years. Uh, mm -hmm. What you do? It's minerals and iron. Everything is mixed into it. Trace minerals. You buy this. Go to the store. Maybe I'm sure in Puerto Rico because they have a lot of chicken. Buy a bag of chicken feed, and mix one ten pound bag feed? um grit. Chicken one ten grit. pound bag of grit concentrate with a fifty pound bag of chicken of uh, yeah chicken feed. Chicken grit. Grit. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. It was a rough day Monday. Anyway, five ten pounds of grit concentrate and ten pounds of chicken. Grit, mix them together, and you have the, pretty much the equivalent of a good pigeon grit. Fifty pounds of chicken grit to one bag of grit concentrate. That's what I said. <laughs> yes. So that if you have any questions, Elvis, you can give us a call. You can ask for me if you want, or Jerry. But there's a letter. See, he sent a letter, and the letter came back. He tried to call. And she didn't answer. That's Elvis Presley song. Ay, ay, ay. Yes, well, it's it is. Western Day. Uh, if you say. So we're going to talk about this. This picture of Veronica, if you want to put it up on the screen. Um, I'll let you talk about it, Jerry. Okay. Uh, is it on the screen now? I'm assuming it's Yeah, it is. I got this picture.
also get cancer, rare, uh, but in this particular case, if you're looking at it, it's a, a cancerous lesion. Is that what Dr. Bowles has said? Would you read what just went on for um, It seems like a cancerous growth or granuloma due to a foreign object. No amount of medicine will cure this. He will need to have it surgically removed and analyzed by histopathology. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um. <laughs> Wayne's got a question. Okay. Wayne, does your stagecoach carry PMB and pox vaccines? <laughs> well, back then, in the 1880s, Wayne, you should have known that, they didn't have refrigeration. And the stagecoaches um, couldn't carry it because the PMB and the pox vaccines and the paratyphoid vaccines would thaw mm -hmm. out. Uh, and But I tell you what, all of the stagecoaches held uh, always had at least one pretty woman. And when the outlaws would chase the stage, the stage across the prairie, um, there was always a sharpshooter uh, that would lean out the window and shoot the Indians. Uh, and the, the pretty girl would eventually uh, fall in love with the guy shooting the Indians, and they would then have children. But we do carry PMV. Mm -hmm. We do not carry pox. No longer um, made. Not in the United States. We carry PMV and paratyphoid vaccines. Yeah, um, yeah we, we can't get a pox vaccine in the U.S. Do we have any other questions? This type of question, I mean, because um, we're over time, but I hope you folks don't mind. We're two okay. minutes over as, as we speak. It's okay. So the we kind of touched on the nest pads, but mm -hmm. we talked about the coconut nest pads, which the coconut nest pads come in three sizes, and then we have the felt nest pads, which are back in stock now. That only comes in one size, the nine inch, right? Yeah, nine inch. The felt comes in a nine inch. Um, and then for nesting material, we also- Well, you missed something. what I miss? Nest pads. Do we not have nest pads for canaries and parakeets and things like that? Well, I was still talking about, I didn't, I didn't get there yet. Oh, okay. So nesting material for the pigeons, we also have tobacco stems. So coconut nest pads, Belgium felt nest pads, and tobacco stems. And we also have nest pads for canaries. I don't have a for cage that. birds. I know you want them. <laughs> cage bird nest pads. So if you have cage birds, we do have some products for cage birds. Mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding me of that. No, are we done? Um, oh, they. Oi, they. Oi, they. That's not like some question either. No, it's not. Um, do you have anything else? Well, um, I'm, I'm really worried about Manny. Manny was always a regular. He was. Always kind of yanked my chain about my suspenders. <laughs> and we haven't heard from Manny in a while. So Manny, if you're out there, um, send me a letter by stagecoach. <laughs> How about by pigeon? Send a message. Well, I don't think Manny's got a <laughs> pigeon that'll fly two ways. How would it know to come back? I could send Matt, and no, that wouldn't work either. Anyways, anyways. Well, it's been uh, <laughs> an interesting show, to say the least. the least. We thank all of you folks for um, watching. Don't forget to call and pay for your birds. So that one you can call and ask for Gina. <laughs> Um, I think I'm run out of words. Um, I know Jerry mentioned it in the beginning. We the catalog is not ready yet. We we're waiting on the printers. Um, soon as it's out, it will be on our Facebook. It'll be on our website. We'll let you know if you order and we have it. We'll send it to you. Otherwise, um, and we tight. we did insert a few mistakes on purpose. We did because there's always people who did like the that phone mistake. So yes. we try to please everybody. <clears throat> yes. So next show would be Friday, April 10th, and 
as of right now, we will be having an auction. Yeah, we're going to have some uh, real nice racing homers on the next auction. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned that uh, I'm running low on good quality pigeons. So if you can see it in your heart to help the hobby, all the money goes to charity for our auctions. Uh, I can't use one bird or a hen or a cock. I really don't want two or three pair. I'd rather you send me one pair. If you send me one pair of Man. good quality birds, I'll pay for the shipping. Banded also. They, yeah, they, they have to be, to be banded. banded. Yes. Wasn't there another question that we didn't get to, no. Veronica? You weren't going to answer that one or it just didn't come up? Um, it up there. So I think that's all for today. Hope everyone stays safe, stays healthy, and we will see you back on April 10th. Any questions, comments, anything you want to see us uh, do on a show or show you how to work it or just show it on the show, um, give us a call. Shoot us an email. What are you smiling at? I thought I'd do to you what you do to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I, I want to say goodbye. And but... we'll be more than happy to show it or present something that you'd like. Adios, Kimo Sabi. <laughs> Have a great weekend. <laughs>